hopefully the G sample is over here. Alright, the G sample is over this way. And I don't know, it's a little weird. Hold on. I gotta adjust my mic. Ah, there we go. That should be better. Yeah, never mind about that shit. AWS. Didn't bother picking up that, uh, didn't bother picking up that tape, so. Some kind of a server room or whatever the hell this is supposed to be. That feels like such a cheap All app because right. now back to Ada. Every step of the way, you have to solve these weird, stupid little puzzles. Then we get here, and he's just like, "Oh, well, well, you know, that was easy. <laughs> like it was nothing. So it was nothing." Tell me you weren't involved in this. Yes. But we never meant for this to happen. Then tell me everything. Right from the start. <coughs> you don't get away that easily. So you made this monster. We made the G-Virus, but we never intended this to... You it any way you want. You're still responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that looks bad. <laughs> 
It feels worse. Believe me. Look about what you said. I don't know how much I believe. Just tell me don't destroy that G sample. No, it's evidence. It's going to the FBI. <laughs> you trust that bitch? What's that supposed to mean? She's not FBI. She's a mercenary. She's gonna sell it. The G virus is gonna go to the highest bidder. I thought that was bullshit. I hope you're right. But if the G virus gets into the wrong hands. It is a bit of a nice touch that the different, uh, who put, uh, it's a bit of a nice touch that the two different playthroughs have slightly different interactions with her, different dialogue and all that kind of stuff. Just make the different, make the different playthroughs feel at least a little bit distinct. In reality, there isn't that much of a difference between the two. You gotta get what you can get, you know? I was just thinking about you. That makes two of us. I was getting worried. No, we make a good team. I gotta ask you something. Way's clear. Please, tell me you got it. Oh, I got it. Let me verify the G sample and we get the hell out of here. Before we do that, I ran into Annette. And she claims you're not FBI. Oh, Leon. Why couldn't you just hand over the sample? I realized, as much as I wanted to trust you, I didn't. I really hoped it wouldn't end up like this. So that's all this was? I was just some pawn to you? Look, I'm just doing my job. And I'm doing mine, so drop that damn gun! I'm taking you in. Hand over the sample, Leon. I don't want to hurt you. And you shoot me. But I don't think you can. That was reminiscent of the 
A playthrough in the original game where that had happened and Annette had shot her and she fell over the side. In the B playthrough as Leon, she was attacked by the tyrant. She shot it in the head a few times and it stumbled over the side, but in the process it threw her against a wall. And she supposedly died there. Of course, given her appearance in later Resident Evil games, we know she didn't die. What the hell is that possibly for? It's nice imagery, but I can't make any sense out of it. <laughs> Who's that? is coming down. Listen to me. You need to get out. Fast. Yeah. There's a way out. We can make it. Where are you now? Claire, are you still there? Leon? Hey, Leon, you're breaking up. Forget about me. Just get out of here. Damn it. Nine minutes until detonation. Oh, knife. <laughs> Man, shit just blowing up all over the place. Let's, um... Let's get that... Magnum out. I don't know how much ammunition I have for it. Pretty sure it's one of those things we actually had to craft the uh, ammunition, or else you weren't going to have any. So let's get that out. Oh, there's mag ammo. Freaking Ivy's. Didn't hit it and didn't kill it, but it didn't knock it down. I don't think there's much of a point to killing them at this point. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, is this a fucking Minutes joke? Until detonation. Get going. We'll need that. It's 
it's always two slots because they got to make sure you have two slots in your inventory for the upcoming sequence. have to get the other one. Ah. Cheaters never win. Who said cheaters never win? You have arrived at the bottom level. Sorry, I had to plug in my headphones. I miss her. <sighs> Leon? We made it. Just like I said we would. Who's this? This is Sherry. Okay. Jesus. What was that? I don't know. I'll go. You take care of Sherry.
So, are you guys, like, boyfriend and girlfriend? No. We're just... Uh, well, we actually just met last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been one hell of a first date, though. Yeah, you have no idea. Look! He might be able to give us a ride. <sighs> what if it's not just the city? Get Sherry out of here. Come on. friendly. <laughs> so, is it over? I don't know. But if it's not, we'll stop it. Whatever it takes. Yeah, you damn right we will. As long as we stick together, we'll be fine. Come on. Hey, you guys can adopt me. <laughs> adopt uh. <laughs> We can get a puppy. Uh, puppy. And a parrot. Parrot. Great. I always wanted pets, but my mom said they're too messy. Uh. Yeah. Next up on this boring Wednesday is a song to get your blood pumping. All right, so that is it. The second campaign playthrough of Resident Evil 2 Remake. I won't be unlikely to do it the other way around with a Leon A and Claire B on this channel, so this is pretty much going to be it. So, what summarize uh, my opinion of this game? I think it is freaking awesome. It is probably the best game remake I've actually seen. I think it's better than the original Resident Evil remake that was released for the GameCube, although, um, I mean, that game is not, not bad by any means. Just, I think this just elevated the original, or not, it sort of blended the original Resident Evil formula with the Resident Evil 4 style gameplay, but managed to craft it in such a way as to really amp up the horror. Because as much as people like to say that Resident Evil 5 was the departure away from the horror roots of the game series, Resident Evil 4 was, in my opinion, the actual departure because it moved away from a small number of enemies which were difficult to kill or whatever and really worried about all of your ammunition conservation and all that kind of stuff and you don't know what's around the next corner to more of an action focused thing with Leon making smart ass comments and uh, spinning back kicking enemies in the face and all that kind of shit it's kind of ridiculous Resident Evil 2 sort of amped up the number of enemies on the screen at once and all that kind of stuff over the original Resident Evil. But they definitely went back, in a sense, and did something that I thought that Resident Evil should have been doing for the past decade. Which was putting the fear back in the zombies, because every game you sort of got further and further away from that original sort of sense of dread of the game, that there, there are these zombies that are difficult to kill and all that kind of stuff. So then you started seeing those parasite uh, splagas monsters and they were definitely intended to be more um, fearsome than the zombies in the earlier games. So you sort of get further and further away from those original games. You sort of get the impression of, like, well, Leon is running around with these enemies here. So, like, all those, like, his first trip through Raccoon City, like, there's really nothing there. Like, if he can do this, he definitely could have done that. And you get to the point where, like, you get to Resident Evil 5, and these motherfuckers running around with chainsaws and all that kind of stuff, you start thinking... Jeez, why the hell did Chris and Jill have so much difficulty just in the mansion in the first game? And they just downplayed the zombies so much. They downplayed the T-Virus and all that kind of stuff so much. That it felt just wrong, in a sense. But this game put the zombies back in the forefront. Made them not nearly as many as were in the original game, it feels like. But definitely made you... They were a greater threat. 
shooting them in the head didn't necessarily kill them. They were... They took a lot of damage. They came at you from a bunch of different angles. They crept around in the dark. They made creepy-ass noises. They did a lot to sort of revitalize the, well, frankly... Um, let's just say the Resident Evil formula as it had evolved up until Resident Evil 6 had grown stale. 7 sort of brought it back in a fashion. It was definitely a different kind of game. You do feel the Resident Evil kind of formula in there somewhere, but the first person gameplay and the sort of a little bit more impersonal um, sludge enemies, whatever the fuck those things were called. Didn't have the same feel as the old zombies did. So while Resident Evil 7 was a step in the right direction, I feel like the 2 remake was a better step. So I'm a little bit torn over the future games in this series if I'd like to see a continuation with this. Where pushing the horror hard, but following a Resident Evil 4 style formula. Or pushing the horror hard. Not quite as hard, probably, in set with 7. But following a 7 kind of formula with the first person view and all that. There may be room for both. I'm also a little bit of at a loss as to whether I want to see a proper Resident Evil 8. Which could go with either formula. Or a Resident Evil 3 remake. Or Code Veronica remake. One hand, I don't know if Resident Evil 3 is going to end up being... I should look up the numbers to see whether Resident Evil 3 was the big seller that 2 was. I know Code Veronica launched on the Dreamcast. Now, Dreamcast never really sold that many units, so it was probably limited by that. But it was re-released in the PS2, which probably sold a lot there. and Like every other console, so... I get the feeling that since the Resident Evil 3 was pretty much just a PlayStation game. It did get ports, but it's mostly thought of as a PlayStation game. And Code Veronica isn't really that well sort of associated with the Dreamcast. Code Veronica probably sold better. And in a way, Code Veronica was a better game. First game on a new console generation, the 3D backgrounds, all that kind of stuff. I think it probably... Probably um, sits better with the audience. Although I think that it would be nice to play as Resident Evil 3, play as Jill again in a this style game. I don't know, Code Veronica feels more likely to come. There is probably a Resident Evil 8 because Resident Evil 7 launched what one or two years before. The, this remake came out. So they probably started work on a Resident Evil 8 right after 7 launched. They saw the success of 7, so they probably built building another one based on the same formula. This was probably a different team working on the 2 remake. So let's say they're working on a 3 remake or a Code Veronica remake. It might be a couple of years before we see that, but probably not that long before we see Resident Evil 8. <laughs> I did not earn that A. <laughs> did not earn that A at all. Should have gotten it in less time, too. I screwed around a lot. Um, um, anyway, uh, some people were down on this game because some people are going to be down on anything. I think this is probably the best you could expect out of a remake. And I'm usually pretty down uh, on remakes. I don't like remakes I didn't I don't I, like the RoboCop remake the Total Recall remake I don't want to see the Terminator series get carried forward even though that's not really a remake the Star Trek remakes oh my god JJ stop it with the goddamn lens flare I, I hate remakes so me liking this is pretty high praise for me Anyway, that was the Resident Evil 2 remake. I don't think I have anything else left to say. Not that I really had anything to say to begin with. <laughs> anyway, that was it. Hello, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked what I had here, 
I got an ass ton of other games. I've been doing this for damn near a decade, so I got a lot of stuff on this channel. So feel free to check some of that stuff out. I have a playthrough of the original Resident Evil 2 on the PS1. I actually had both a, uh, probably a Claire A, Leon B scenario on that. Only the way I had played it was different than what I did here. I actually played through both games in entirety and then edited the two playthroughs together. So in one episode, you both have Claire and Leon going and do their respective things, cutting back and forth. Believe me, that was more of a pain in the ass than it seems like, because I had some technical problems. <laughs> Didn't want to do it with this one, though, because I don't... This game doesn't feel like it quite meshes quite as well as that. That is one thing that I wish that they had done with this, was ditch the whole A and B story concept, or making sure both characters have an A and a B, and just sort of went along with a more an integrated story where this character goes to this area, and this character goes to this area, and they have the chance of interacting a little bit more. I feel like that was a bit of a lost opportunity, but they wanted to kind of recreate the feeling of the original game. Can't fault them too much on that, it's just not what I would have done. I would have had it make a little bit more sense, like the second and the second and third phase of the, well the first, second and, th the Birkin fights happened multiple times. And Annette dies twice, and all that stuff. The the tyrant dies for Claire, but is continuing to be alive for Leon. So it doesn't... The two stories, even though that was a Claire A and Leon B, it doesn't make sense the way the two stories mesh. And you feel like it really should have. That's... If I'm going to give this game a major demerit, it's that they didn't put as much effort as I feel like they should have in making the two stories mesh together. I would have not bothered trying to make an A and B for both characters so I could focus more time and effort into making them work together. But I'm not working for Capcom, so that was not my call. But anyway, uh, that, that's the end there. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you on some other video, hopefully.